Tony, welcome to the show again. Uh, I've been waiting to chat to you for a while. You've been really busy, of course. A lot has been going on in your life with regards to many things in cricket. But first and foremost, new venture, new year, new role. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm really excited. Um, I can't wait to, to get started. Um, like I said earlier, it's, yeah, it's a new role for me, but there's a lot of guys around me that I think will support me positively. And um, yeah, I have an open, open mindset to it. I'm looking forward to the challenges that obviously will bring captaining yeah. aside. Um, and then I think just getting better at finding that balance of obviously batting and leading from the front with runs and obviously captaining and learning things tactically. So I'm looking forward to the challenge and hopefully I can and learn and get better and help the team get better every day. I need to ask you about your time with SAA on this channel specifically. Whenever I ask about the next generation of batters in the top order that is coming through all formats, your name comes up almost every single time. So your goals for the future and your time with SAA, what is the communication been like with like, the national selectors, etc. about your future? Uh, I haven't had uh, too many conversations with national selectors and stuff like that. Um, I imagine when they want to speak to me, they will. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think at SAA I've been quite successful and um, that's all I suppose you can really do is when you get a chance t is to keep try your best to score runs at that level to show that you're ready. But ultimately everything will happen when it's supposed to. Um, I think uh, having a really close relationship with someone like Zubi and, and uh, who showed me how what's expected at that kind of level and him speaking me th through things I learned a lot and that's why I felt I was able to you know yeah. step up and try express myself on that level um, yeah and it's always good to have some sort of positive media f uh, following if guys are saying your name it does help uh, but on the flip side when you don't score runs I'm pretty <laughs> sure the same guys <laughs> want your head so you you can't take you can't yeah. read into that kind of stuff uh, too much you just got to look after your own house and, yeah. and keep it clean and try your best so you get different types of athletes, of course. They approach the game differently. Some players will go to the Nets bat till they can't anymore. Some people don't like to maybe practice as much and just go into game time with a clear mind. Um, there's also obviously some athletes that are, base, uh, that are in the middle. But also, just your approach on your career. How do you plan your career going forward? Are you a type of guy that takes it game by game? Or are you a guy that plans your future five-year five plan, two-year plan, three-year plan? I think when I was younger, uh, I used to obviously have the idealistic situation where I'm planning five years in advance and you have these type of goals and timelines when you want to reach things. Um, but as you get older, you realize there's a lot, of, a lot less things in your control than you thought, like you said there with uh, selectors and stuff like that. There's, those things are not really in your control. Um, so if, uh, for me, I obviously, you, everyone has goals. You obviously want to play international cricket. You want to represent your country. You want to uh, captain a franchise side. Those are sh uh, goals that you set out. I think for me, it's sometimes a bit dangerous to put timelines on it because yeah. there's a lot of things, like I said, you can't control. Um, and a lot of those goals are, are outcome based. And I think the when I'm doing really well, most of my goals are process stuff and controlling what I can control um, and trying to be at peace with myself um, and then find and then the results they'll come. Um, I think. Like you said, with the guys that train differently, I, I'd say I'm probably one of the guys that tries to hit a lot of balls, probably sometimes too much. Uh, but that's just probably for my own uh, confidence, because if I if I know I've given myself the best chance of preparing, then I can feel confident in the game. Um, and anything you're not prepared for or you haven't prepared for in the net will probably happen in the game. Yeah. That's always how it goes. So, yeah, I think I just take it that kind of way. Um, try to be positive, and I think uh, trying to find a little bit more enjoyment sometimes. When we we're looking at the end goal, we forget to enjoy, you know, coming to train at Newlands every day. Um, we have a very a really nice job. We get to stay in hotels. We get a lot of things we forget because we're just looking at mm -hmm. the end the end result. So sometimes just take a step back and like mm -hmm. actually enjoy the journey you're on. How have you worked on your batting style? And like I asked um, the coach in the press row as well, game of cricket is changing at an alarming rate. I mean, <laughs> the people are even talking about having four day test cricket and something that I don't really want to see um, <laughs> so ODIs T20s we, we're seeing less love for the ODI format more love for the T20 format it's, it's almost forced batters to almost up their strike rates how do you manage how do you do that and have you worked on that as a, as a player as a batter have you as, is that in the back of your mind that the, the game is changing yeah I think any any uh, current cricketer can see the game changing in front of them I think if, if when I started uh, at the at 18 or whatever, the game was uh, at a precipice and you could see people were going to start 
going uh, in a different route and it's obviously important for you to try to stay up to date and stay relevant. Um, my goal personally is I would always want to play test cricket. Um, that's my, my first goal and I think that's that's the that's the pinnacle and then after that you obviously like I said you want to stay relevant you want to adapt you want to be able to meet strike required strike rates um, you want to entertain crowds um, but I, th I don't think that's going to happen in one season I think mm. you're always going to it's going to be a, a slow incremental uh, performance and I think I think there's a few guys that have said it and I look at someone like Scolzi um, who Maybe people don't see him as a 2020 player, but if you look at his strike rate, you look at how he's gone in all of his innings. Is he's a smart cricketer? He does what he does best, and he he get he finds a way to score really quickly with his, within his own strengths. So I think that's something I've learned from a lot of the other guys is that you don't completely have to change your own game. Mm. You can use your strengths, which you know uh, I might not be switch hitting all the time or whatever, but use your own strengths to at the end of the day be smart enough to to get where you need to be. And. I don't know. Um, I've looked at the Proteus, and especially in the last three games, the running between the wickets has been very poor, and I've seen it for quite some time. How important is that to add to your game, especially if you're not maybe a guy that clears the boundary every single time? How much work do they do domestically with you guys with between running to the wickets, knowing how to play those shots to get off strike? Yeah, I think um, there's a, especially here with uh, Salih and a couple of senior guys, you know, we understand that in all white ball formats, dot balls are, are, are a slow death. So we, you've got to have the skills to get off strike. It also helps you uh, not feel the pressure as much. Obviously, you know, a couple dots and then you, th you obviously need to make something happen. Um, but when the scoreboard is ticking, obviously you don't feel that pressure. Um, I think running between the wickets, look, I'm a, I'm a big guy, so I don't think I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, a dasher. So it, it needs to be a single for sure, yeah. but, uh, or a, a definite two. Um, I don't know if I'll be turning threes into yeah. fours and stuff like that, yeah. but I think everyone has different ways of getting getting off strike. Um, and yeah, look, like I said, you have to stay relevant. You have to learn those those skills. I look at someone like a, a Daniel Smith as well, who's a really exciting cricketer, and he's he's developed his game in a way that he can now, I believe, play in 2020 tournaments and dominate a game. But maybe it's not the uh, the Tristan Stubb inning straight back over your head. Yeah. It's just different ways of scoring and getting off strike, like you said. Um, and being able to to enjoy your strengths. So what have you like? There are a lot of youngsters that have been in the team since you've been here. So John O'Bird has come through the system. Um, you know Ethan Cunningham is on the list now as well. Also young, he's a 19 player. You've got uh, Abdullah Bayumi as well. You've also got um, uh, like Daniel Smith is someone as well that you look at those type of players. They, at the moment, the youngsters are playing fearless cricket in a way. You could say that they're coming out with a lot of confidence. But my concern is that the lack of red ball cricket they're playing. So how do you help them with regards to that aspect of the game, but also learn from them with regards to the white ball game and how they approach the game? Uh, I think an important thing with the young guys is they, they, they almost, I think this new generation, I know older, I sound like a, maybe a dad, where they have this kind of, you know, this, this arrogance or this entitlement of they deserve to do well. But in, in, if you take a step back, they, they do do the work to do it. They mm -hmm. just have a different attitude, maybe different generations. You know, they have access to different information. So they do have this inner belief that you see nowadays, which I think is quite exciting. And if you use it in the, as, a, as a team, it can really help you. I think one of the youngsters that's really stood out for me is um, Khali. Um, mm -hmm. If I look at him, he's one of the guys I've never really, I've never played international cricket, but it's a guy I really think that if he keeps growing quickly, he can put his name forward in the future because he's a great batter, great fielder, great bowler, um, and he's a, uh, how can I say, really mature cricketer. And I think if you look at our 50 over comp, he was one of the better uh, performers in every single game with bat or ball. Uh, ball. And he's a guy that I think will, will also uh, shock a few people in this tournament when he gets a chance to with bat or ball. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to our young guns when they, when they do get a chance to, to impress. Lastly, just your goals for the season and a message to the Greek Fanatics fans. Uh, goals for the season is obviously score as many runs as possible. Um, <laughs> I would like to win a few trophies as, as captain and lead the side in a, in a positive way. And, for the, and one of the things is to have a reconnection with the fans in Cape Town as, as captain and, and as a team to get the guys back into the stadium and for them to feel like we're representing what Cape Town is about. Um, and then... To the Cricket Fanatic fans, uh, we really enjoy the following. Sometimes you guys can be a little bit harsh. That's all I'm going to say, a little bit harsh. Um, but you know what? All criticism 
there's, I'm sure there's some truth in it um, if you look at it the right way. Keep following, keep uh, enjoying cricket. We'll try our best to be good things. And uh, maybe it would be nice if some of the fans uh, connected with the players as well in, in a way that's, um, how can I say, more conversational. So something like this where you have an interview where there's yeah. different fans or you know, get yeah. people more n- connected to um, people in the team. Because I think nowadays there's a disconnect. Yeah. Even though there's social media, yeah, I feel like someone has to judge Tony on what he sees and not, uh, you don't really get to speak yeah. to me or, or anything like that. So I think Good idea. it'd be nice if you guys sometimes come with some positive uh, ideas. And uh, yeah. I don't know. There's a lot in the pipeline. We're just waiting for a sponsor. So maybe we can help out with that. <laughs> no, look, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put the feelers out for a sponsor. If it's, if it's monetary stuff, I don't know how much I can help you. Um, but I, I'll, I'll always be prepared to, to help up with the interview because, like I said, you guys are really important with us connecting with fans, us growing our personal brands and team brands. If it's not for you guys, then we don't really have that opportunity to attract sponsors ourselves yeah. and for you guys. So we can't thank you guys enough for the work you do. Thank you for being such a listening cricketer. Well done. Thank you. Yeah.